Today, Jeff Anderson from the Wapaka Chamber fills us in on Strawberry Fest. We'll stop by to see the mural at the Wapaka Food Pantry. Randy O'Connell stops by to talk about the YMCA expanding to Wapaka, and we'll visit Rhythm and Brews. I'm Joni Kern, and this is What's Happening Wapaka. We have Jeff Anderson here from the Wapaka Chamber of Commerce. We're going to be talking about Strawberry Fest today, which is huge. People come from all over, don't they, for this Absolutely. Gathering? We have people coming uh, certainly locally and from our region, but also as far as Madison, Milwaukee, Chicago, all over the state of Wisconsin. There's just oodles of people that show up. Now, how many years has this been going on? Since 1989. This will be the 26th year of Strawberry Fest. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. So you have some things going on. I want to talk about Kids Alley um, for a minute because I think that that's an important thing to be able to bring the, the entire family and have lots of things for the kids to do. So what is... Sure. Yeah, uh, uh, Kids Alley is in Rotary Riverview Park, and we have a variety of activities for the kids organized by local organizations. We've got bounce houses, there's the little Strawberry Sally and Sam con costume contest, there's uh, activities, crafts, uh, clown, Dizzy D uh, the Clown, there'll be a petting zoo, uh, we'll pack a walks for children at 9 o'clock. So just a lot of fun activities happening. Great, so we can bring the entire family, we can keep the kids busy. Yep. There's lots of shopping going on downtown. Yes, 150 vendors. Oh, that is wonderful. And the strawberry eating, strawberry shortcake eating contest, we have to mention that as yes, well. Yes, we have strawberry shortcake for sale, about 3,000 servings available, and we always run out, so make sure to come early and, and get your shortcake. And then at noon is the strawberry shortcake eating contest, and that's always fun to see who can eat their serving the fastest. All right, what else is going on at Strawberry Fest? Well, there's a variety of um, activities happening outside of Strawberry Fest as well, such as the model uh, railroad uh, show at the rec center and the model show. Yep, that's Friday and Saturday. That is correct. Also, the uh, uh, Wapaka Train Depot will have an open house. The Hutchinson House will be open, and the Holly History, uh, History Center will be open. And uh, then back down on uh, the square, we have the Strawberry Lane Cafe with eight restaurants from local restaurants and entertainment on the bandstand. So just a lot of activities for, for uh, kids of all ages. What do you have going on now Saturday night? You have bandstand happening on Saturday night? Um, all the Strawberry Fest everybody? activities are during the day. In the evening there are some local establishments that will have entertainment and this year the, uh, at the Performing Arts Center is a, a, a band is coming in uh, designed by five. I'm sorry, five by design will be performing at seven o'clock. So we've got all day long Yep. And I know because I've been there that you have to come early because otherwise you're going to be parking in Waiwiga. No, <laughs> kidding. Um, but parking is tough on that day. I know they have um, ways to get you from outside if you're parked quite a ways yeah, away. Yeah, it can, it can be busy. Usually it's not too, too hard to find a spot um, on one of the local uh, residential streets. Um, and I want to just point out, uh, too, that all of the activities, there's a lot going on, but our website, wapakamemories.com, is a full list of all the activities and all the details. So Strawberry Fest is in June. What else do you have? We have Hometown Days, which is huge, um, for July 4th. So what does that, what is all going on for that day? Sure, for Hometown Day celebration, our annual 4th of July celebration, we'll have the parade at 10 o'clock on Main Street. And we usually have about 80 entries. And so we encourage businesses and organizations to get together and, and uh, put an entry into the parade and celebrate our 4th of July. And um, the, the entries are judged. We, we judge them based on their patriotic decor and, and their involvement of music in their entry. And, and we score them and recognize the, win the winning entries. And then in the evening, of course, is a fireworks show um, over Shadow Lake, which is always a, a, a big celebration and an exciting show. About 15,000 people see our event every year. And between the parade and the fireworks uh, down at South Park, the Knights of Columbus have their annual chicken barbecue. So make sure to check that out. So again, it's an all day affair and it'll be um, all kinds of fun for everybody Absolutely. in the family. Yeah. And we all know that we can go onto the Chamber website 
because you have all of the summer events and what's going on with them there, correct? Yes, if you go to the event calendar at wapakamemories.com, we have all of the community events that are happening, uh, and there's a lot to see and a lot to do over the, over the summer, so make sure to go check it out. Great. Thank you, Jeff, for being on, and we will see you again. Thank you. Next, we are going to go see the Wapaka Food Pantry Wall. The Secret Service has been um, putting in a lot of time, and some of the school kids have been helping out with a fabulous wall. If you want to go far like a rocket at the speed of light, books make you bright like the stars that you see at night. Or like a robot prototype that can read and write. Your library card is your ticket to see the sights. Libraries have the secret ingredients that you need when you try new experiments. New experience helps kids succeed. And the secret formula goes fizz, boom, breathe. The summer reading program is out of this world. Sign up at your local library and be a star. We are here at the Wapaka Food Pantry. We had the Wapaka Secret Service on a couple of months ago. They are painting this wall behind me and we are here to talk with them a little bit and check on their progress. We are talking with Cameron Potts, who is the um, organizer of the Wapaka Secret Service. Hi Cameron, how are you today? Good Joni, thank you, how are you? I'm wonderful. It's a great day to be out here working on the wall. It is a beautiful day. Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, we have it started and tell me a little bit. You were just telling me about the plans for getting it finished. So tell me a little bit about that. Okay, we've got the, the wall um, power wash. We've got it base coated and we've started with the mural. We are going to be painting the empty trees and the schools will be coming over next week. We've got the Wapaka Middle School and the Wapaka Grade School and the teachers are going to bring one class at a time and each child will be able to put their handprints on the wall as well as they're invited to bring a can, a canned good for the food pantry. So in the span of three days we're going to start on the 28th, work on the 29th and 30th and then again we'll have the 8th grade on June 2nd and we will have a thousand handprints on this wall and hopefully if they each bring a canned food 1,000 cans of food to fill up this food pantry. What a wonderful thing um, for the kids to do and I know we got a shot of this picture. We also um, know that there's uh, the Wapaka Secret Service has a Facebook page so you can we can actually follow the progress of this because some of the work on this is going to be done over the summer right? That's right. We've got to, we're inviting the homeschool kids. We want all the children in the Wapaka area. This is the Wapaka area food pantry that serves the Wapaka school district. And it, now it's time for the Wapaka school district to be serving the food pantry. So we are inviting the homeschoolers over the summer. And because they'll be coming with their moms, they'll do the high stuff on the scaffold. And then we're going to have the Lutheran and Baptist schools invited in the fall. The high school kids are going to come when they can and put some finishing touches on it for us. Um, this is just the beginning, so never judge a work in progress. But um, it's going to be pretty cool. And, and we just wanted the kids to be aware of what we can all do together and also kind of just cheer up this area. We're right here at the food pantry. We've got Ruby's Food Pantry across from us. And this parking lot is going to be full of an, a volunteer appreciation day when we're all finished, too. So we'll rock Wapaka. You'll have to let us know when the volunteer appreciation day is so we can, so we can, and we'll keep track of, of how this is going. I think it looks fabulous already, Thank and you. it's just going to look better as we go. So. Thank you. I just have to tell you, too, who's involved. We just started on a wing and a prayer, literally, and we've got... Just today I picked up a thousand rubber gloves from the hospital in case we have latex allergies or anything like that and someone doesn't want to get dirty. So, and we've got the um, an anonymous donor that picked up the tab on the entire project when our grant fell through. And, um, and pretty much just everything. The moms have been donating snacks for these guys and uh, we had uh, the dozen sunglasses donated from Thumbtack, which you're not wearing yours today. No, no, I need my real glasses to, yeah. to see. We also had someone donate uh, um, 50 bucks to put the domain together. So we do have the WapakaSecretService.com. We've got the WisconsinSecretService.com for when this movement grows, .com, .org, and .biz, and .net. So we're just planning on spreading the love and hoping that it just keeps going. That is really exciting. 
And we're going to talk to the kids here in just a couple of minutes. So we're here talking with some of the Secret Service today. I know we have a couple of agents missing, but this is kind of exciting to do this whole wall and to see it come along and progress, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We uh, just want uh, people to kind of recognize us. We're going to be filling in the green cracks uh, right behind me. Uh, we're going to put uh, some hands on the tree trees. You know, the more people that, that they think of us as being really kind, the more people, you know, they think of us really kind. Absolutely, and you've got all of the um, classes coming over next week to yep. put the leaves on, so I know that you're going to be practicing with the handprints today. Yep. And doing some of the green, and there's lots more coming with the wall. How do you like your Facebook page so far? Have you seen it? Uh, no, I have not. I bet, you know, uh, with the people, you know, helping us, getting us as uh, part of a community right here, it's, it's going to be really good. This is going to be fun to watch this come along throughout the summer. So thank you very much for talking to me, and you guys have a lot of fun today, all right? All right. Okay, so we have another agent we're talking to. It's kind of exciting to be out here today, isn't it, painting? Yeah, it's pretty nice out, out here. <laughs> and um, you're going to be coloring in the green today, and have you been painting? The, are you part of painting the trees on? Yeah, we're gonna put hand. We're gonna practice doing handprints on the wall. <laughs> it's kind of fun watching this, you know, as you come here and work. It's kind of fun watching your progress um, over time and seeing it because it really is starting to look nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It and I'll bet you you didn't imagine when you started this how good this wall would look at the end, did you? No. Yep. Well, you have fun today painting, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. We wanted to stop by the wall again as it is going. As you can see, there have been a lot of kids from the school here putting their handprints as the leaves on the tree. It looks fabulous. Kids will be here throughout the week and into um, next month just finishing up the wall. Stop by and take a look at it. It is gorgeous. The Revival in downtown Wapaka prides themselves in providing above and beyond customer service. From small to tall, women of any age can consider The Revival your professional, personal stylist, helping you find the right outfit for any occasion, weddings, senior pictures, or even a special night out. The Revival also specializes in home decor with a large selection and variety of items to choose from, including art from local Wapaka artists. The Revival, 111 West Fulton Street, across from Farmer State Bank, downtown Wapaka. For more information, call 7 7 281 5100 or find them on Facebook. The Revival, home, art, and fashion. Okay, now we have Randy O'Connell here. He's from Health and Fitness Headquarters, and we're going to talk about something really exciting. You were just telling me about it. It's the expansion of the Fox Cities YMCA into Wapaka. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's talk, let's first talk about why this was done this mm -hmm. way. Yeah, we've been working on this since uh, March of 2013. Our owner, Rick Johnson, um, uh, purchased our, our health and fitness headquarters back in 2006. And it's always been his dream to have a YMCA presence in Wapaka. Um, so um, over the years, it's kind of kept in the back of his mind, and, and it finally came to fruition here where, uh, like I said, we've been working on it since March. Um, done our due diligence. The YMCA of the Fox Cities has been very good at meeting with our local leaders. Um, and really to see if there's a need in Wapaka, and uh, it's been a resounding yes. Um, and so uh, we are going forward with it, um, and uh, we're getting a lot of buzz around Wapaka about it there. And so, um, but we're just really excited to bring a lot of what the Fox Cities Y has to offer to our community. So. I think the YMCAs are really an integral part of a community. They offer so many different programs. So we'll get into that a little yes. in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because the YMCA is not building, that was one of my questions for you. Mm -hmm. They are actually taking over your two facilities. So tell me where those are. Yes, we have two facilities. Our main location is on Highway 22 across from the high school. Um, we also have a new location downtown right next to the rec center we opened in October of last year. Um, we have a facility there also, so uh, they will be taking um, ownership of both. And both facilities, mm -hmm. 
um, offer the ability to go and work out. Yes. So yes. it's it, it, so downtown is great for those people who live very near downtown. In downtown, and one thing nice about our downtown that people like is that it's a 24-hour facility there. So not only convenience, but they can use it anytime. Oh, so. for those of us that are up at one o'clock in the morning. Yes. See, I can go work out. <laughs> That's we have terrific. a place for you. So. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit. I know that, um, and it's, it's going to be something that you're going to grow into, mm -hmm. but the YMCA is hoping to bring some of their programs out here. Now, I just recently lost my brother-in-law, mm -hmm. and I know that his family is doing some grieving counseling at the YMCA in the Fox okay. Valley. So those kinds of programs, I think, you know, the, the fitness aspect of it is important, mm -hmm. but everything else that helps the community be healthy yes. is terrific. So yeah. what kind of programs do you know are you planning on bringing in? Well, that's something that we're, we're really looking at, and I'm working in conjunction with um, some of the leaders of the YMCA of the Fox Cities there. Uh, the YMCA is all about youth development, healthy lifestyle, and social responsibility. And so while we are very good at the healthy lifestyle part of it, and that's been our nature for the last 16 years, uh, the youth development will be a very big thing for us that we're excited about. Um, we do cater to ages 10 and up currently, um, but there's those tween years that we really want to hit as well as uh, those younger years that we're really excited to, to get out in our community and offer more programs um, for health and fitness with those with so, the youth. So are you planning, as you, as you grow into this, are you planning on getting a new facility for the other programs or are you going to be using part of the health and fitness headquarters or am I asking things that are secret? Well, no, no not things that are secret. Um, uh, we're, we're still in the initial stages of getting things going. Um, what I will say is we're right now, um, and a lot of our members are asking what's going to change our facilities, really we're at capacity in, in terms of our facilities, in terms of equipment, that type of thing. So nothing really changed there. Really we don't have any room to start any programs. We'll be working with um, with the park and rec, local, uh, or local schools, um, churches, um, places where there is space to do the programs, we'll start to offer them there. Um, um, I used the analogy of uh, the Greenville YMCA started uh, in 16 different locations before it actually had a brick and mortar building. So we'll take a similar path. We'll offer some of the programs throughout the community. Um, I will say the YMCA is very excited about the 11 and a half acres that come with our Highway 22 location. And I'll just stop there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we don't want any more, we don't want to ask any more secrets. No. So it, congratulations, I think. Yeah. Um, I think the YMCA is going to be a terrific thing for the community, yeah. and it's something that we're all going to be able to take part in, even you know whether we're young and single yeah. or whether we have families. Yes, yes, they reach a lot of people. They basically have a program for everyone, and that's something that I'm excited, and I know they're excited to bring that to our community there. They're, uh, they're very impressed with what they see and what we've done so far and how closely knit our community is. Um, it, we're very lucky to have uh, the affiliation with the Fox Cities YMCA. They have um, turned down other offers from other towns, um, maybe a little larger size. So we're very lucky to have them coming here and ha have some of their expertise here. So. They're also lucky to have Mr. Johnson being so We are very lucky. He's a generous. very generous man. Very Absolutely. Generous man, so. Well, thank you, Randy, thank for you. coming on the show today and giving us a little bit of a heads up. Just very quickly, when are you hoping to kick this off and have this open? Um, well, the official transfer will be, like I said, it's September 1st um, we're gunning for. So it will happen before the end of the year. Um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> It'll be exciting. Yes. Okay. Next, we are going to take a little trip to Rhythm and Brews and see what they have to offer. Master Stylist, offering up high style salon on 6th Street in Wapaka, offering haircuts and coloring, nails, skin, and more. For more information, contact Angie at 920-850-3283 or email her. Angie, Master Stylist, proud sponsor of What's Happening Wapaka. Rhythm and Brews. It's a great little coffee shop, fine instruments here, and we're here with Matt Vassar, who is co-owner, and he owns, he runs this um, place, so welcome to the show, Matt. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. It's kind of nice to be. It's kind of nice to be in here. You've got a great little place going on, and you've got a bunch of instruments. Today you are going to, and I'm a big coffee drinker, but today you're going to demonstrate for us how to make a pour-over 
coffee. Right. So um, so what we're going to do, what it starts with, and I think I'm just going to let you explain how all of your stuff here works. Okay. Um, well, this is a, it's a pretty archaic station. This is actually how they did coffee in the 1700s, so it's not like I invented this or anything. It's a, uh, but it gives it a much smoother taste, a much bolder taste as well, because what's, what you're doing is you're completely submersing all the coffee beans instead of just having like a shower head. Uh, in your typical coffee machine, you have like shower heads kind of spraying them. Uh, this one completely submerges it, and it's, it takes a little longer, but it's, it's worth it. Um, I'll make you a cup here, and you can tell me what you think of it. Um, so the first thing, uh, these are made out of, uh, you can, they make them out of several things. The best are the porcelain or ceramic, just because they hold the heat much better. Um, so you don't end up with cold coffee. Um, and also there's different, um, these, I don't know if the camera can see that. Uh, there's two different types. There's a, what's called a V cup. Those are more common. And this is a cone cup. The cone cup, in my experience, I like a lot better. It's a lot slower process. And um, it, on, the, on the V, it, it goes through much quicker. It's not as bold of a taste. So, um, so you basically, you put this filter in here. Um, you grind your coffee up. I use, um, I, I've tweaked it quite a bit. It actually took me several months to get the grind I wanted because uh, it's really important. Uh, if, you, if it's too fine of a grind or too coarse of a grind, you won't get optimum uh, taste. And uh, so, so I mess with the grind. Also, the temperature is very important. If you're doing this at home, if you buy one of these, and you're just, uh, you know, if, if the water isn't hot enough, again, you won't get good enough taste, and you won't get a good enough crema on top of it. So, um, so somewhere around 200 degrees uh, is, is about optimum, 203, actually. Um, so basically, um, would you like this to is yeah, absolutely. This is kind of great. I have a very good friend whose fiance is a coffee snob. Okay. So the next time they come visit me, we'll have to come in here absolutely. and see what he says. He'll I, love your coffee. The coffee snobs, we have to charge them extra because they're used to paying the big prices. No, I'm just we won't tell them that until <laughs> right. he gets here, though. So, um, so this is my water. Uh, right now, uh, what I'm doing is I'm saturating the filter. And the reason I'm doing that is a couple of reasons. A, I'm warming up the ceramic so that when I, um, when I go to, to, when I have the coffee in there and actually go to pour it into the cup, this is already warm. So it, you know, it helps keep everything warm. Also, it's just kind of rinsing the, the filter through and getting any impurities out of there that um, might be in there. So I was in here uh, a couple of months ago and I had one of these cups of coffee and it was just phenomenally good. So I asked him if he'd do this for us. Absolutely. Uh, this is a Kenya. And um, the, I, I work with a couple of different roasters. My main roaster is Farmer Brothers, but I also work with a local roaster uh, uh, out of Amherst um, called Ruby Roasters. And that's what, what you're gonna, this is a, a Kenya. Um, and uh, I've really gotta plug my roasters because um, I went through 12 different roasters actually to find roasters that I was happy with. And these guys are top notch. This coffee smells absolutely divine. It does, doesn't it? It does. Just the ground smell great. So, basically, I mean, it's not a real difficult thing, but you don't want to just hurry up and pour it all in. You want to uh, kind of go all around the edges and just make sure every little part of it is, is um, completely uh, underwater, basically. And then you just let it come through there. I was just amazed at, I mean, how simple this is and how good a coffee I know, it was exactly. how good it tasted you know we we live in a society where we're always trying to make better machinery and do things better and faster and everything and uh then they find that if you go back to the way they did things 200 years ago it's actually better this way oftentimes it's like that so we're waiting for this to go through now here you have um you do bands in here it is it's a coffee and tea just kind of a nice great place to relax it's very very homey feeling in here um but you do bands and you do open mic nights yep. and um if you uh, go on our facebook page um i have all the bands upcoming um which will also link us to our instagram and our uh, website uh but the the facebook i keep um, updated every day so it'll tell all the bands and any up, uh, open mics coming up uh, next open mic we used to do open mics every other Saturday 
now we've been having more and more bands, so whenever we don't have bands, we kind of fill in with open mic. So I think the next one is June 14th. Okay, and you also do um, music lessons here, so tell me what kind of lessons you teach. Um, we do uh, electric and acoustic guitar, uh, bass, mandolin, I think I forgot to mention that to you before, um, brass woodwind, wood, uh, woodwind, and vocal lessons, and we also have a young lady coming in and giving fiddle lessons. So. So it's a, you just have a whole wide range of things. And you could teach me how to not go sharp and flat in my voice, if you could stand my voice for that long. <laughs> I definitely will do what I can on that. Um, and we do have openings, so uh, we can sign you up after we're done here if you would like. And you do some of the lessons yourself, correct? I do the guitar and the bass and ukulele. I forget ukulele lessons. I give, um, so those I give personally. And then I have a gentleman who gives the vocal, brass, woodwind, and mandolin lessons. And you're growing. You've only been open for a little over five months, the end of November, correct? And you're growing. Um, I know that's how I heard about this place as a friend of mine came in for a cup of coffee and she said it was absolutely delicious. So, Well, I think, I'm sorry about that, um, I think our best advertising is word of mouth and I, we have a good reputation, I'm hoping. <laughs> I haven't heard any complaints, at least not, uh, not to my face, I don't know. Yeah, and it's really nice. I think what's really nice is that it's a very different kind of environment for just sitting and relaxing with friends in the town of Wapaka. Um, I don't drink, so it's kind of nice to have a nice little coffee house that we can do this too. We really want it family friendly, you know, every age. And my coffee is ready. It is, let me know what you think. Let me, can I, is it gonna be too hot? Probably. <laughs> so we'll see if slow. we'll see if I burn my tongue on it. Mm. Oh, it's very good, and it isn't too hot either. Right. So, well, he's he's cleaning up for us. Matt, thank you so much you. for um, taking time out of your schedule to invite us over here today. It was great seeing you, and we will see you again because I know we have something coming up. So, absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate um, how how great and supportive Wapak has been, and uh, as far as the other retail businesses as well, they've been very supportive and just appreciate the business. And God willing, we'll be here ten years from now. Terrific. Thanks again. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Next up, we have our pet of the month. Roy Mitchell was kind enough to fill in because Monica Gardner lost her voice. Um, so welcome to the show, Roy. Good Thank to you. see you again. This month, we have Bo. So tell me a little bit about this handsome dog. He's about a year old pit bull lab cross, we think. Attitude-wise, way more lab than pit bull. He is, you can see a little bit of pit bull in his face, but you can also see a lot of lab in him. And for being a year old, he's just been, he's just been wonderful here, very laid back, which labs oh, yeah. are. He's a, and we had him out to Bean City on Saturday, and he, the crowds, the motorcycles, nothing bothered him. So he is a great, um, he would be great for me, someone that doesn't, knows how to love dogs, but is not necessarily very schooled in training, is as he? long as he gets a lot of exercise. So he's about a year old, so tell me a little bit, because puppies, he is still, need more attention, and they need more exercise, and, and so they need more time than older dogs, correct? Well, yes, but I mean, yeah, the exercise, the uh, obedience, I mean, he's got he's got all the basics down, but you would just have to uh, not be, become lax with it. And you have to make sure that you have a large enough yard to be able. To, I think a mistake that some people make is they're putting huge dogs into very small apartments where they don't have room to run, and that can create um, a little bit of a problem if they can't wear off their energy. Oh, right? correct. I mean, if you've got someone that loves to run five miles a day, well then it's probably not an issue because the dog would love to run that five miles with them. But. And it's summertime and labs are mine are loving being in the water and swimming and fetching sticks. So he is up for adoption at the shelter. Correct. Um, so if you're interested in a great guy, he's very handsome, um, stop by and see him. Yeah, he's got, he's microchipped, neutered, vaccinated. You know, he's just ready to go. 
all ready to go. So, okay, you can check out um, the Humane Society's website if you want some information. They have pictures of all of the dogs. So take some time, go there. So thanks for being on, Roy. I appreciate you filling in at the last minute today for Monica. Thanks for having us. All right. We'll see you again next month. Or Monica, if she gets her voice back. Someone. Okay. Thank you for joining us this month for What's Happening Wapaka. Watch for us as we are out and about this summer around Wapaka. As always, find all WIN TV programming online at wintvwapaka.com.